بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته عليا أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم صدق الله العلي العظيم In the aftermath of the Paris attacks there have been an unprecedented amount of backlash and attacks and assaults on Muslims in North America. It took different forms and different shapes. Some of them are, you know, like the passenger airline profiling, kicking off some passengers because I don't like his face or he was reading something. Or it is bullying of some of the Muslim students in the schools. Sometimes it's threats as it is happening. Some militants in America who are carrying arms are sending emails and letters to many Islamic centers around the nation, threatening them with violence, with killing. Get out of this country. We will do this. We will do that. So a number of acts of bias and discrimination and an anti-Muslim rhetoric. And this spike is attributed mostly to the mainstreaming of Islamophobia, mainstreaming of anti-Muslim rhetoric by some unfortunately political candidates and some lawmakers who are in government, in the Congress and in other departments. And those are playing on public sphere. Definitely when something happens with this magnitude happens in Paris or elsewhere, those who are non-Muslims, they know nothing about Islam. And they know nothing about Muslims too. And they're going to develop a fear. If you have a neighbor who is a non-Muslim, even if you're there for the last 10 years, 20 years in the same neighborhood, that person is going to think because you know what you hear about those terrorists when they interview when a terrorist does something bad and they interview his mother you know what the mother says oh my son was an angel he was so good he was this he was this he was this he was that but all of a sudden he became shaitan and he kills 200 people so the Americans are going to say, yeah, all of them are good. They are nice, law-abiding, good, you know, friendly, smiling. All of a sudden, wahi comes on them. Huh? Revelation that you have to attack. You have to kill. You have to do that. So we are not immune, my friends. Today, let me tell you something. They perceive us as suspects in America. We are perceived, we are perceived by the vast majority of the American people, unfortunately by the vast majority, not all, vast majority, as suspects. 
We can do anything to harm them any minute. We can turn against them. So can we change this negative perception or no? We have to live with it for the rest of our lives. Our women who wear hijab, who observe hijab, they can live with this fear for the rest of their life. Our men, the same. Our children, the same. Those who go to school, those who go to work. What should we do about that? I think, yes, there is a room to change this negative percep perception. We have to change it. Allah says, Inna Allah la ma I am not going to change it for you until you take the initiative. You have to do something positive. It is about your life, your future. Show me your jihad here. Your jihad, I'm not God saying, I'm not asking you to carry a gun and fight. Your jihad is your brain, your aql, your mouth, your tongue, your pen. I want you to use them to change all these negative perceptions and add your voice and be there. Be there, my friends. Be there. Be in the church, neighboring church. Go there. Even if you are not a church goer, go to the church. Go to the school. Go to the marketplace. Go to conferences, go to workshops, go to interfaith gatherings, go here and go there. Be there, be visible. Show yourself. Let them see you. Let them see that you are different and you, you mean it when you are different. We can only counter Islamophobia in America and the West through proactive, proactive initiatives and manners. Constructive and proactive manners. We have to engage. How do we combat hate? Through another type of hate? Does not work. How do we combat bigotry? Through another bigotry? Does not work. Through love, through educating them, telling them, yes, we have a problem in Islam. Yes, we do have a problem. As you do have it, you have it in all religions. In all religions, we have terrorists. We have people who twisted their ideologies upside down. And we have them in Islam. And I mentioned just last week here, almost every week I mentioned why we have ISIS. You, you almost mem memorize what I tell you. Why we have ISIS? Because we have some Muslims and non-Muslims promoting it, supporting it. It is for their own goodness, for their own political and economic benefit. We have ISIS. So, and this is not our problem. This is the problem of the entire humanity. We all have to put hand in hands and work together to elim eliminate terrorism. Also, one of the things that we can do, my friends, is to support the advocacy groups. I know we are all busy. We are all running day and night. But there are some Muslim advocacy groups who are doing the work on our be behalf. But they need help. They need your help, they need your human resources, they need human power, they need financial assistance. So try to help them. And one last thing, my friends, this is what I witnessed and I experienced firsthand, is civic engagement. The more you get engaged with interfaith, with law enforcement, with others, with even elected officials, the more they're going to accept you and respect you. Now, maybe some of them, they don't, whatever you do. But that's the small minority. The majority of them are going to accept you. So try to build friendships. Try to build relationships with others, partnerships with others. One of the good things that few members in our community did, just like last Sunday, two sisters from our community, they went to a uh, mission via Hamas, a Shia Sunni mosque, Shia mosque, Sunni mosque, church and Jewish temple. They worked together to pack food for the homeless. 20,000 meals, I believe, you know, 20,000 meals. They worked together, the men and women of a Shia masjid, Sunni masjid, church and temple. Rather than fighting with each other, carrying swords and fighting, you know, and killing each other. They sat together and they were working. And these things, it works. It brings the hearts together. Not the hearts of all people, but 
the majority of them. And this is what Allah wants us to do. Through this journey of partnership with others, working to serve the humanity, working together to serve the humanity. So I urge you, my friends, some of you, you don't participate in these things. You know why? Because you are too busy with your families. Dinner here, lunch there, breakfast there, today in my uncle, tomorrow my aunt, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my cousin. Busy with your families. Cut back on this, cut back on your family engagements and give part of it, not all of it, homes, 20% of it. 80% for your families, 20% for your Islam in this country. You don't have to respond to your mother-in-law every time she invites you. One time tell her, my mother-in-law, today I have to go to the church, unfortunately. I have to work there. Today I have to go to this temple. We have to exchange these visitations so we can get to know each other better, inshallah. And remember always, Allah does not do the work for us. Allah says, I help you when you start the work. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ما بأنفسهم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات اللهم من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد